We are back. Sam Cedar on the Majority Report on the phone. It is a pleasure to welcome back to the program the founder and CMO, that is Chief Meme Officer to you, uh, Sean McCallie of Data for Progress. Uh, Welcome back to the program, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Uh, So, Sean, there's um, um, two things that I want to discuss with you. Uh, first, um, came up because the Supreme court just, um, I guess it was Friday, uh, blocked two gerrymandering rulings in Michigan and Ohio. Lower courts had tossed out the congressional districts, uh, congressional maps, I should say in Michigan and Ohio, both those situations up until 2018 in, in Michigan's case, but in Ohio's case still, uh, continues to be highly problematic in terms of the how many people go out and vote for Democrats and then how many Democrats end up uh, in the congressional delegation, uh, you know, places like Wisconsin, obviously the worst uh, of stuff like that. Um, And you are part of a new initiative to, um, I guess it's uh, what the kids are saying today, fuck gerrymandering. Um, Well, tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we teamed up with the uh, folks at um, Pod Save America. Whoa, the media. whoa, whoa. Excuse me? So, yeah. Um, you know, they have a massive, enormous platform, really large base. Um, and we wanted to get out this initiative to as many people as possible. And right. so fair enough. Uh, we're working with them. Uh, you know, ironically enough, I actually wanted to call it the Blue Virginia Project, and they actually came up with the, the profane name we ended up with. I can't even speak it on the air. You know, I have to, I don't like trying to, I don't like saying swear words. So I don't. Know. Um, yeah. So the uh, the idea behind this is that yeah, absolutely, the courts um, have for the most part stalled on on gerrymandering. Um, you know, there's still progress being made, but right now the most effective way that we can fight back against gerrymandering as individuals is by supporting, um, you know, candidates down ballot um, to help break these, uh, these gerrymanders. And so the first state that we're taking a look at is Virginia, uh, which has legislative elections, elections of 2019 and actually um, has had their maps redrawn. The, uh, the maps were so racist that the courts, um, through them out. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that in this cycle, um, progressives are really investing to make sure that we gain the most um, out of these fair maps and don't let any um, any seats go to waste. So every month, Data for Progress um, does some math, looks at some mathematical models, uh, and comes up with uh, 10 candidates that we're going to run on a slate. Um, and folks can donate uh, to those 10, 10 candidates on the slate, none of us take anything off of the top. It just goes directly to the, uh, to the candidates. Now, okay, so uh, these are 10 candidates in the state itself. Like yeah, in, running for... Per, per state? The House of Delegates and State Senate. Okay, but per um, state. You don't do like uh, three in Virginia and then three in, I don't know, Pennsylvania. Well, so Pennsylvania doesn't have... Um, elections in 2019 but yeah as in the 2020 cycle we're gonna probably expand it uh to do more states um and we'll select candidates uh, across those those states but um just sort of because 2019 is the first year we're doing it and virginia is the main state in which gerrymandering is playing a significant role uh that's our focus okay and people should also be aware that in 2020 um is the year that the census takes its um, uh, its census and mm-hmm. these are the numbers. So really we have until the 2020 through the 2020 election to get turn as many state houses blue as possible to um, to impact the uh, redrawing of these districts, which happens following 2020, essentially after the new census uh, material comes out. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So as like we're using Virginia as sort of a pilot to test sort of how excited people are about this idea. Um, 
you know, already we're seeing um, hundreds of hundreds of people contributing. So once we uh, break the gerrymanders in Virginia, um, we are going to turn to the other uh, key states uh, where folks should be investing down ballot. Um, I think we'll, like one of the most exciting candidates we're supporting is uh, actually a woman named Sheena uh, Bynum Coleman. Um, and she is actually running against Kurt Cox, who is the uh, speaker of the House of Delegates. Uh, he's the guy who drew the racist districts. So I think it would be sort of poetic justice if he ended up losing um, to a black woman um, after drawing this incredibly racist map. So uh, she's one of the 10 candidates we're supporting with this uh, slate. The other ones um, that you're pushing, is it Joshua Cole? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us about Joshua um, Cole. Joshua Cole uh, came up just short in 2017. Um, it was, <clears throat> he was outspent uh, three to one, but still uh, closed in and lost by a couple hundred votes. Um, that district um, was sort of underlooked uh, at the time um, because it was an Obama-Trump district. Um, and the, the party was at that time really investing in this idea, you know, we got we to gotta win back the, uh, the suburbs. Um, and really focusing on those Romney Clinton districts that flipped. Um, so this is a, a chance for us to invest early in coal. Um, you know, he was outspent three to one last, last, uh, last cycle. And we think that if he, if he is really on parity, um, he, he has a chance to, to flip that. that what, what is the impact of money in, in, in races this localized? I mean, I, you know, one of the things that I noticed in, in the wake of uh, Trump's election I think I must have gone to three or four ad hoc, semi ad hoc um, women's groups that had set up for the very purpose of funding state races across the country, like adopting, you know, the Colorado legislator or a, a legis you know, and funding these places. And I never really saw any data or any follow up on how much of an impact it had for a state senator to get an extra, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, 50,000, 100,000. I mean, how much money are we talking about makes a difference in these races? Sure. So, so a couple things on that. One is the theory of change that we have. Um, I think there are a lot of groups that do this. They spend a lot of time like, you know, give us money. We'll, you know, have this overhead and then we'll, um, you know, pick these districts and, you know, we'll sort of, we'll play, we're like the general in the army, you know, with the money. And my view is actually that that actually doesn't make a lot of sense. We run an incredibly bare boned operation. Um, you know, we have people who uh, build the models, but for the most part, once they're built, it's just uh, the matter of running the data. Um, so we don't like to do the thing where we like, our generals on the battlefield, you know, making pack expenditures and in-kind donations. Our view is we find the races that we believe are the most likely to be, be the pivotal seat, um, the sort of last seat that flips, and we encourage you to give the money there. There's no overhead. It's just an act blue form that we continuously update. Um, so we really try to do as bare bones as possible. Um, we did this last cycle with GiveSmart, and there's actually a study that we did where I'm sort of a obsessed with the same question that, that you had. Um, and our targeting was incredibly precise, um, right at the pivotal district. Um, nearly all of our money went to, to races that were decided by fewer than 10 points. Uh, most of the money going to races that were decided by um, fewer than five. Um, and multiple races that we supported ended up in recounts, which shows you just how close those races are. Um, and we ran a regression model controlling for a variety of factors. And we found that being on the, uh, the give smart list did predict a higher probability of winning um, than what we'd expect for the, just controlling for um, sort of district specific factors like uh, Clinton's share of the uh, 2016 vote. Um, so we're fairly confident um, that this money has a big impact. And the last thing I'll say is, is these, uh, these races are often, um, you know, won and lost by um, a couple hundred votes. 
Uh, in many cases, these candidates are raising, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, would be a, a big campaign. Um, and so if you're considering, you know, giving money to be the like the extra ten dollars on a presidential campaign that's already going to raise ten million dollars in a quarter, you know, why not be the extra ten or fifteen dollars um, that decides whether or not a campaign can, um, you know, pay for a mailer or, you know, pay their canvassers to do another uh, walk. You know, most of these candidates are not going up on airs with expensive TV ads. You're funding the bare bones operation. So your money's going to go a lot further um, than, you know, being another dollar in a, uh, in a consultant's wallet. There's got to be some type of, um, uh, you know, a figure where you can say like one dollar to a state Senate campaign or a state um, assembly person campaign is the equivalent of like giving a hundred thousand dollars to a presidential campaign, right? I mean, that's more or less what it's got to be. Your your one dollars, relatively speaking, um, can can have that type of impact. All right, let me ask you this question about the. You know the, what? Now that you've asked me, uh, I will I will sit down the team and and we'll we'll work on those numbers. And as soon as we have them, uh, I'll come back on the show and share share we found. Oh, you mean Sean? Uh, none of the guys at Pod Save America thought to um, look into that stat. Um. No? Oh, that's weird. All right. Well, because they're so knowledgeable about politics. It seems like a fairly Next obvious we'll, question we'll, for them. That's all right. I'm just Next curious. Time we'll, that's all right. Uh, we'll no, partner with you. No, then. because they're so funny. They're so funny. But anyways. Uh, uh, you know what? We'll, we'll do a partnership with you. No, no, no. The, that's that's, it, that's fine. That's fine. The They've got a much bigger platform. I understand, uh, Sean. Now, uh, so uh, let me ask you this. When you have the 10 uh, candidates... How do you choose, how do you decide that it was going to be 10? Did you say, let's do 10 as a round number, or we're only going to do candidates where we think our money has an X percentage chance of changing the outcome? And also in that question, um, to what extent did you guys um, assess their politics? Like you you clearly like uh, the Sheila Bynum uh, Coleman uh, race and you like Joshua Cole. Uh, Do you have people in there that you'd be like, well, they don't necessarily, they're not on my wing of the, the party, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is uh, we need these seats. We need to have the congressional districts drawn in a way that gives Democrats at least a chance, if they get more votes, to have more representatives. Yeah, so the 10 uh, is, you know, reasonably arbitrary, but I will say that the the. The number the, the, the number stays the same, but the people that we're supporting is going to change each month. Um, so we are going to be recalibrating based on, you know, how the first month turns out. Um, if we have a candidate who, you know, was on the first round and we're looking at their, their numbers and we're feeling pretty confident, um, then we're going to sub in someone else. On the question about the ideology, that's definitely something – I've been thinking a lot about it was something we didn't um, weight heavily in our give smart uh, initiative. Um, And what I am doing right now, we're actually working on uh, about four different down ballot projects um, that are each going to have different missions because we really want people um, to feel empowered when they're giving money down ballots. So we are planning um, and should be rolling out very shortly an initiative that is explicitly focused um, only on progressive candidates. Um, and then we will have um, climate um, and a very interesting um, immigration criminal justice initiative as well. And I assume you're doing those with like a Slate Gab Fest and, um, and who else? What else are you going to do? Like one with the Joe Rogan show or something like that? Uh, you know, Sam, what, do you want to, do you want to partner with us on the progressive we can uh, talk. down ballot? We can talk about that. Right. Sure. We mm. can talk yeah, about that. A, uh, come by happy hour and we'll talk about it. Um, I, I very well may do that. Um, all right. So you just negged me into partnering with you on, uh, <laughs> that's how do you think, what do you think it this works. is all about? How do you think this business got built? <laughs> um, so, all right. So we've, we put a link to, um, to the, F gerrymandering uh, campaign at the um, where you can go to the Act Blue page and you can contribute. I mean, I you know this is 
I mean, we, we've been saying this around here for, for a couple of years. This is the uh, dollar for dollar. This is where you're going to get the most value out of your campaign contributions. And in terms of the long term um, uh, uh, health of the country, frankly, um, it is it is crucial. And it's quite clear now. It's quite clear what's going to happen at the Supreme Court. They're basically going to say there is no um, there is no prohibition against partisan gerrymandering, regardless. Um, we've talked about this issue quite a bit. Anthony Kennedy had set it up about uh, six, seven years ago, uh, eight years ago, that he just needed some type of way of, of, you know, ask social scientists to come in and help us determine when something was overly gerrymandered. Um, it, it should be enough to say, you, when you look at Wisconsin and say, Democrats won uh, 56% of the vote, yet, uh, Republicans control 64% of the state house. It doesn't make any sense. And um, the, if the courts aren't going to do anything about it, which it appears it's not, the only way to fight this is going to be through initiatives like this. And so um, Virginia is... And can I say one last thing on that? Please. You know, Virginia has uh, two kind of centrist senators, uh, not, not the best uh, governor, lieutenant governor, um, at the current moment. And I think that one thing that I see at these investments down ballot is really building the next uh, bench right. of, you know, um, Democrats. And, in you know, in a lot of cases, I mean, in, in the last cycle, you know, <clears throat> we were able to put, um, you know, half a dozen women, progressive women of color, uh, women of color who refused to take money from Dominion Energy, um, and that is the, the bench of future Congress members, senators, um, and statewide elected officials. So really investing in young people, investing in young talent is really important, particularly because there is real, a real age divide uh, within the Democratic Party. Uh, younger representatives and legislators tend to be uh, much more committed to the progressive movement uh, and the values of the progressive movement than the older legislators are. Okay. And um, uh, lastly, um, if you can, I would love John Favreau's autograph. That would be great. You know, next time I see him, I'll... I'll All right. I appreciate I'll that. I'll ask for you. That would be great. Um, he went to Holy Cross, my uh, hometown of Worcester. Oh. Yeah. Uh,